It's an experiment where there's no going back. We're doing this. Anchorage is voting by mail for the first time. Tonight, a look at why the city decided to make the switch. I'm Lauren Maxwell. What do average citizens think about Anchorage's new vote by mail system? We'll hear coming up. From double ballots to mail theft, how the city is coping with some of the fallout from the change. You're watching Alaska's high definition news leader. This is KTVA 11 News Nightcast. Good evening, everyone. I'm Liz Raines. Welcome to a special election edition of Nightcast. There's been a lot of talk about Anchorage's first ever vote by mail election happening right now. So tonight, we'd like to dedicate this program to addressing concerns, identifying problems in the process so far, and helping connect you with the information you need to cast your ballot correctly. We'll get to all of that in just a minute. But first, we have some breaking news tonight. This is a live look at the Seward Highway at Tudor Road. The southbound lanes are closed after a deadly crash. It happened just after 8 o'clock tonight. Anchorage police say a woman was driving west on Tudor and was unable to make the right turn onto the Seward exit. The SUV launched off of the overpass, hitting multiple guardrails before landing upside down in the southbound lane. Police say the woman was alone in the SUV. SUV. She was declared dead on scene. APD is asking you to avoid the area tonight as it begins what could be a lengthy investigation. All southbound drivers will be forced to exit the highway at the Tudor exit. And as for the Glen Highway, the Department of Transportation expects the Eagle River Bridge will reopen tomorrow as planned. Crews have finished removing the area damaged by an 18-wheeler earlier this week. DOT officials say traffic should be back to normal just in time for your morning commute. Right now, Anchorage is in the middle of its first ever vote by mail election. Ballots went out mid month, and since then, the city clerk's office has gotten more than 20,000 completed ballots back. It's also gotten tens of thousands of ballots returned marked undeliverable. These were addressed to people that likely moved out of Alaska. But sending to them cost the city $2.50 per envelope. Anchorage assembly members say it's on the state to fix it. The state doesn't update their voter roll, hasn't for 10 years, and that's incumbent upon the state because they're, they're the ones who hold the master roll. And we're going to tell them, hey, all these are undeliverable. You guys need to correct your, your database. Meanwhile, the state says it does drop people from its list if they haven't been responsive after four years. But otherwise, the responsibility lies with voters. It's up to the voter. Okay, um, our records are only as good as what the voter provides to us for their residential information, their mailing information. Uh, we don't have anywhere else that we go and get this. We only go by what the, provi the voter provides us. Voting by mail is definitely an adjustment, and some people like the change better than others. KTV 11's Lauren Maxwell set out to see how Anchorage voters feel about the new system. Anchorage residents are casting their votes in a whole new way, and some say they like the convenience. The mail showed up, and uh, my wife and I filled it out and mailed it in. Piece of cake. It's easier to just have it mailed in. Um, I, I didn't really have any concerns about it. But others do have concerns, especially about filling out the ballot at home. We have family situation, and dad knows best, and you fill it out. And you might be influenced by the opinion of some member of the household. I have some of the same concerns that they're, it's kind of open to abuse, but I hope it will result in a, a larger number of people voting. At a pie stop in Midtown Anchorage, <laughs> owner Steve Satterley says he knows how he prefers to vote. I'm a traditionalist, and I just like going to the polls. So. But Amanda Cash, who also works here, says there are things she likes about the new system. I wanted to um, check it out, see what it was all about, and then it gives me some time to really think about my answers before I mark any any boxes or circles or whatever it is, I don't know. Cash doesn't know. This had a fancy letter opener. Because she hasn't <laughs> opened her ballot until now. Here's my ballot. She didn't mind letting us see what was inside. So it has the mayor's school board, um, three different school boards, and all the propositions as well. And perhaps just as importantly... Voter instructions. Cash <laughs> says everything here seems pretty clear. Now there's nothing to stop her. I think I have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to do. From filling out her ballot and turning it in. Lauren Maxwell, KTVA 11 News.
Now, several of the people we spoke with said they wish their ballot had come with a return stamp. That was something the Assembly considered when it approved the initiative in 2016, but members say they weren't able to get it worked out with the post office in time for this election. A reminder, your ballot must be postmarked by Tuesday, April 3rd, in order to count in Anchorage's first-ever vote-by-mail election. While it's too soon to measure the success of this new system, tonight, perhaps it's useful to remember how this change came about, what's happening with ballots right now, and what the research shows in other states. This is a new direction, but it's one the municipality has been studying for years. Assembly Chairman Dick Traney says this is the way of the future, and he's been involved in a lot of the city's past. What year were you born? Oh, 1990. Okay, you were one year old when I ran the first time got elected. Public elections in Anchorage have rarely attracted big turnouts, but in 2010, voter numbers reached a low. It was running about 19 percent or less. How representative is the election of the population when you have no one showing up to vote? Turnout was so low that year, the city began ordering less ballots. Will this even count? That led to a shortage in 2012 when more Alaskans did show up at the polls. I want a real ballot. For more than half of the last decade, the Assembly has been looking to other states for solutions. Washington, Oregon, and Colorado are now vote by mail only. We've seen state after state try and go to this. So we just need to vote and get this moving down. The road. When the Anchorage Assembly presented the idea in 2015, members and the public seemed on board to explore it. That item is approved. Look forward to getting more people involved uh, in the voting process. For me, it's really an issue of time. It's time to share the issues with my kids, time to sit down and talk about it, and it doesn't even take that much time to drop it in the mail. The council definitely supports this unanimously. But by 2016, some had their doubts. Is there a plan in place for what's happening to see that the information is accurate and follow through on that is accurate because that's always the big fear or concern from the public. Quite frankly, they have no guarantees. That it, that we don't have any guarantees yet. Amy Domboski became a project skeptic. The more I saw what was happening and specifically in 2015, what I saw happen in the mayor's election in the runoff is after we certified the election, they found bags of ballots. That was a big turnoff for me. Now, with the first wave of ballots already out, Domboski's still glad she didn't support it. And you have residents that are calling you and telling you, I lost my ballot or I have five ballots or my mail was stolen. Was that really the best way to go? I'm not sure it was. 46 ballots were stolen in Domboski's district, and the story prompted reports of other issues. One reader said a friend found ballots in her building's trash can. Others say they never got theirs at all, or when they did, it was for someone who'd lived there previously. How do you ensure the public that there won't be fraud in this election? Well, because we're, as the problems come up, we're working through them, like the ones in Chugiak. We've worked through that problem. We have to know what the problem is. They have to call us and say, hey, I found a trash barrel here with all these ballots in it. Come and get it. And we're happy to do that. I mean, it's, it's an ongoing process. And if they don't do it? I have no real answers for you, okay? We knew there'd be a few bumps along the way, but if, the, if we can get the population of voting up to the 40, 50, 60 percent range and higher, isn't that really worth it? Has it been worth it in other states? It's hard to tell. A study published by the U.S. Election Assistance Commission looked at voting by mail in California, where in some cases, turnout went down. Washington had its lowest voter turnout ever last year, well after it made the switch. I don't really buy that it was all about voter turnout. I don't buy that... Um that it was just about saving money. Domboski claims it's about politics, but like it or not, there's no turning back at this point. Both Domboski and Trainee agree vote by mail is here to stay. So get used to it. Um, buy some stamps, little tiny things, or go and put in a drop box. Technology is going to win eventually. It always has. Moving forward, Trainee says he wants to see the city prepay postage on those mail-in ballots. He says several constituents have asked him what a postage stamp is. Further proof, he says, that elections must keep up with technological times. And speaking of technology, officials with the city's election center are monitoring the KTVA Facebook page right now. They're available to answer all of your questions about the election in the comments section of our page.
We've heard from voters, but how are election officials handling the change? There's some parts of it that are actually easier because we're not doing things manually. We'll sit down with city clerk Barbara Jones to talk about the challenges and opportunities of the city's first vote by mail election. Welcome back to a special election edition of Nightcast. Earlier this week, the city clerk sat down with us to address the vote by mail process and some of the concerns we've heard about it here in Anchorage so far. Our questions to her stem from our viewers, statements by Anchorage Assembly members, and curiosity within our own newsroom. In the past, Anchorage has allowed vote by mail for absentee, early voting. Um, but now on a larger scale like this, what are some of the challenges in implementing that citywide? One of the things that we've kind of talked about is that it is absentee by mail on steroids and it's really um, absentee by mail on a larger scale. There's some parts of it that are actually easier because we're not doing things manually, we're doing them using technology. So far, what's the response been? The response has been very good. We've got 10,000 ballots returned in one week. We've heard a little bit of criticism from people in the community about why are these printed in color? Wouldn't it be cheaper to do it in black and white? The decision to go to color is partly so that this really stands out to voters and that voters see this document and recognize the Anchorage Votes logo, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. we've been trying to do a lot of publicity about so that people don't throw their ballot package away. With some of those ballots going to places where um, people were previously registered, but they may not live there or haven't lived there in years, how can you assure the public that those ballots uh, won't be compromised? You know, they're out there floating around in the public that somebody else might not fill it out and send it in. Every voter has to sign the outside of the ballot return envelope. We're checking the ballot return envelopes and comparing the signature on the outside of the envelope to the signature in the state of Alaska voter registration database. If the signature doesn't match, if somebody else signs a ballot envelope that they find, we're going to catch it at signature verification. In addition... And are you verifying every envelope? Yes, we are. We're verifying every single signature. And uh, there's a voter declaration on the envelope that says that I swear under penalty of perjury that this is my name and signature. 
and that I've lived in Alaska or I'm in a resident of Anchorage for the last 30 days. And this sworn declaration under penalty of perjury, we believe also helps prevent fraud. If we do find any instances of fraud, we're going to um, ask the municipal prosecutor to prosecute. Why is it important that it be on the outside of the envelope? It protects the voter, the secrecy of the voter's vote. We never look at the ballot when we're determining if the signature is valid, if the voter has voted previously in this election, um, if the voter um, canceled their registration. Um, so all of those issues are resolved before we open the envelope. We did hear some concern from assembly members who um, did not like this uh, proposition when it came up uh, in 2016, who said one of the reasons they were hesitant about vote by mail is that they had seen hiccups in the absentee voting process here in Anchorage, namely that there were ballots that were found after uh, elections had been certified. What can you say to reassure the public in that regard? You know, the election center has um, locked cages. We have cipher locks. We have lots of other security measures that we did not have at City Hall. How did that happen that um, an election could be certified and then ballots found later after the fact? So at the end of the election, some workers were tearing down the supplies. And it's like a big blue bucket like this. And it had pens and paper and um, paper clips and string. And um, when the workers were tearing that down, they found some ballots in that bag. And the workers said, oh my goodness, we have ballots. And the workers knew they needed to secure the ballots, so they put them in the vault with the black voted ballot bags. So it was just a misunderstanding from some of our workers who were doing an after the election task. Moving forward, it sounds like that was a human error. What kind of training have election workers gotten this time around that could assure something like that doesn't happen? Well, we're all humans, and so there's nothing that can assure that that won't happen. People are trying to do the best that they can. It's very stressful. It's really hard work. And so I would never fault any of our election workers for making those types of errors. Um, however, we are doing some things differently, and our election workers do have training. They've had cybersecurity training. They've had signature verification training. They're having observer training. They're having accessible vote center training. So overall, I think things are going really good. By now, you should have gotten your ballot package in the mail. If you didn't, you can get one reissued by calling 243-VOTE. That's 243-8683. One of the items on that ballot is Proposition 1. Both supporters and opponents of the measure are wondering how the vote-by-mail system will affect that vote. KTVA's Rhonda McBride has a preview of what's coming up tonight on Frontiers. The debate has put the spotlight on what it means to be transgender, and one Anchorage family says that's a good thing. What is it that we need to understand as a society about the transgender experience? The first thing is that it's natural. Being transgender is just as natural as being anything else that you're born as. C.J. Gillis was born a girl, and at 14 he told his parents they had a son not a daughter. The first thing you want to do is focus on your child, you know, and loving your child, being present for your child, recognizing that this was not an easy thing for him to say to us. Good boy, come on. But CJ told them over and over he was a boy until they finally understood. It has taken a lot of effort on my part and learning and research to really try to understand what that means. It's a weird realization for me too, honestly. Our guests tonight are parents of transgender children, Kathy Gillis and Dave Lockard. Both have transgender sons, one at Polaris and the other at East High. They'll share what they've learned. A lot of you may find it surprising tonight on Frontiers.
The battle over bathrooms and transgender access to them has been one of the most hotly debated issues in this year's election and the subject of this week's Frontiers program. Rhonda will be here with Prop 1, Beyond the Bathroom, right after tonight's newscast. You can also find each episode of Frontiers online.